God has, uh, has used Lori for in my life. Prophecy isn't a real mystical thing. It is not like the twilight zone. It is your normal mind receiving the word of the Lord as a thought. You understand? As a thought, just a thought that comes into your mind. And I'm going to show you how that works when you're going to do it. But I want to talk a little bit more about a prophecy in evangelism. We were having, um, no, I want to say something else first. Because this is such a good example. When Lori came into my life, it wasn't like love at first sight or any of that. It was just, you know, she came to work in the ministry and that was all good. But then we started to do some things together. And we took a little walk, we were hiking somewhere in the woods, and there was this branch that went out over this um, kind of fast-moving uh, river. And so I climbed out on there, and I said, come on out, Lori. And she did. And then we were getting ready to go to Africa. And I was teaching her to preach, to be bold. <coughs> I said, here, we were in a park. I said, get up on this picnic table. <laughs> and I want you to just say John 3.16 as loud as you can. And she did. And then she went to Africa, and she hates planes, afraid of planes. And she did. She went. And then some people, the African pastors and apostles and people that we minister with, they wanted to take Lori to some place that she had to take a bus and ride on a bicycle and go. But that's where we always went, someplace that nobody else wanted to go. <laughs> And I sent her off with these people I knew were trustworthy and good people. I wouldn't have sent her off with somebody I didn't know. But she kind of looked at me and, and she went off. And she did. And God used her in a mighty way. Oh, you've got to hear that story. So, why am I saying that? Because, let me be like the father in this picture. And he challenges us to step into things that make us uncomfortable, that, that we're a little bit afraid of. We don't know how to do it. I don't have to finish. You know what I'm saying. Will you do that? Some of you already have begun. The cutting edge in spiritual growth is uncomfortable. It's a place that requires faith, abundant grace that God gives, and courage. Remember, courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to act even when you're afraid. Right? And I know that you have courage. And I know you have faith. So we're going to do this stuff. Okay. So then, on Valentine's Day, we went to, um, it was um, Olive Garden. And so the waiter's serving us, and I, the Lord gives me a word for the waiter. And it was, it was kind of a big word that he was to go back home to his native land and that he was going to be used by God there in some way to help straighten things out in that country. And, I don't remember all of it, but it, it was big. And, and, I, and the guy received it. He received the word. And then I said, I'd like to pray for you. And guess what? 
This is the waiter in the public restaurant. He comes over and he kneels down on the floor. <laughs> now let me tell you what God does. You heard them. You heard these testimonies. But it's so awesome when you operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit out there somewhere. We're all used to it in the church. Praise God we need it in the church. But the people out there aren't used to it. They don't know what's going on. The only thing is they feel the presence of God. They sense God. A word goes into their heart and their lives are changed. And some people are brought from here all the way over to here with one spoken word. They may have to receive in the natural one witness, two, three, turn on the TV, listen to a radio, somebody prophesy, somebody say something to them, and all of a sudden they jump way ahead in their faith and their willingness to surrender to the Lord. That's why the gifts of the Spirit are so valuable to be used out there. The Holy Spirit and his gifts are given to us to be his witnesses, Acts 1.8. Prophecy is useful for edifying believers, but also to show the power of God to unbelievers. Paul says that prophecy is a sign to unbelievers as evidence that God is great. Amen? Amen? Okay. So we know that Jesus did prophetic evangelism when he ministered to the woman at the well. And he had a word of knowledge. Jesus operated by the same Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that you operate by. Did you know that? This is not heresy. This is the truth. He was filled with the Spirit of God, and he operated by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, That's our Jesus. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. So, you know that story, so I'm not going to belabor it. So, there's no formula for prophetic evangelism. There is activation. We're going to do that. I'm going to give you just a few little tips, but it is by practicing. And it's okay to get it wrong. It's okay to make a mistake. Don't get uptight about this, but don't get dogmatic. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> you know, it's okay for church, but you don't want to do that out on the street. Listen, this is a, you pray and you listen. Then you approach with some loving gentleness and explain, and you can explain who you are. If the Lord has already shown you something, you can approach like this. Hi, my name is Peter. And, um, uh, I know that you, you think this strange maybe, but I'm a minister, and I just had a sense or thought that you might need some prayer. Is that right? You see, it's just as, as gentle as that. You see? Or, you know, something else, whatever the Lord puts on, on your heart. Another approach, um, oh, I just said it. you asked our need for prayer. Okay, so we're down here to speak what the Lord has shown you without being dogmatic or demonstrative. Oh, thank you. Now, I'm not sure, but I, I just had a thought. See, that's the way I like to do it. That way, if you goof up, <laughs> it's all right. I, I'm not sure, but, you know, I just had this thought that, that you lost your job. Is that right? No? Is it? <laughs> you see, this is um, an awesome opportunity for the Holy Spirit to grab someone's attention yeah. right away. And so, you watch and listen for the person's response. Sometimes they'll cry if you hit it right on the nose. And if the word is accurate, tell them, I had no way of knowing this, but God did. And he wanted to show you that he is real and that he loves you very much. You know, if it's not correct, you can say, well, I'm not sure why I thought that, but 
can tell you for sure that God does love you and wants you to be close to him and to be in prayer for anything. See, so it ends up becoming an opening for something else. Many times words of knowledge are often used in conjunction with healing. And you've had all of the training about healing, so I won't belabor that. But whether it's healing, whether it's a word of encouragement, whether it's some other type of prophetic word, if the person is touched by it, you have now, like I say, moved them closer to a place of faith and acceptance and then shared the gospel with them the best that you can. I was um, already doing ministry, loving the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Lord began to speak to me about going out on the street and ministering and preaching the gospel. Uh, so I was kind of afraid, and I said to God, you know, I'm willing to do what you asked me to do. I had already decided that a long time ago. That's something you need to decide today. Yeah. Not just give them part of you. I'm willing to do whatever you ask me to do. If you really want to flow with what God is doing in your life, that's a good place to start. He'll take whatever you give him, and he'll draw you closer and closer. But that place of total <clears throat> surrender, that is really the place of most usefulness. So, I said, you know, I'm going to need a bigger guitar, God. I, I, if, if you want to send me out on the street, I've got this little guitar and it's not going to make enough sound. And It was a real fleece. It's okay. Policemen are okay. Because if you need to know that you know, especially if you're going into a ministry and you're going to be standing out on the street, it's okay. It's all right. So then I just let that go. A couple of weeks later, here I am at uh, my home fellowship, and uh, there was a guy from South Africa. He played the guitar. I played the guitar. We kind of worshiped together. The group was worshiping, and I, I happened to notice he looked at me in a really strange way about near the end of one of the, the last worship songs. He just kind of looked at me, and I didn't know what that was about. And then we finished, he got up, and he took off his guitar, and he said, the Lord just told me to give you this. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, he said, I used to use this guitar in street ministry in Europe, and in Africa, and in Israel, now you do it. <laughs> so, one part of me was saying, whoa, that's really cool. The other part of me was saying, oh, no. <laughs> so you understand, as these guys have already said, and these guys are awesome. You already know that. But I am so blessed to know you, Kevin, to know you, Terry, and I'm glad that God put this up together because I, I don't think this is the, the last time. I mean, there's some good stuff coming out. There is a, an, an, oh, every time I get to that place, I can't keep it in. You don't mind if I yell, do you? There is an extraordinary outpouring of God's spirit that's about to come. The glory of God is about to be poured out all over this land. And you are about to be a part of it. Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I'm telling you that our God is God and he is going to do mighty things through Amen. you. And you are going to be training Amen. so many more you don't even know this yet. You're Amen. seeing only this far Amen. and a little bit farther. But God is coming over this next two Amen. or three years. Oh, glory! I'm telling you there is going to be people falling to the right and to the left. And you're going to walk between and mighty things. Oh, God. And the love of God increasing in you. The love of God, the love of God, intimacy with God. Amen. You've asked him for this deeper place, and he's taking you there. And you're going to find yourself shut up somewhere in that third heaven. I'm telling you, this is about to happen. Do you want to be with him, flowing with him in this thing? 
Yes, you do. And you're going to set the captive free. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. I mean, really set them yes. free. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I get so excited about God. <laughs> this is a message that I have carried for a long time. And I'm so happy to announce that it is right at the door. Yes. And you have sensed it. Yes. You have seen. Let me, let me tell you. That God, you know, gave us a, a prayer house even at one point, praying and seeking God diligently, fasting and praying and thinking that the glory of God was about to fall any minute and it didn't happen. <clears throat> oh, how discouraging. Burnout material. Yeah. And I said, what are you doing, God? Why not now? What's happening? We've been waiting so long. Some of you have been waiting for 20 years, 30 years, 35 years. You have been praying and asking God for this outpouring, haven't you? I know you have. Well, God wants you to know that he's heard your prayers and he has been collecting every one of them. And he is using those prayers even now and will bring it to the fulfillment of the very deepest things that you've prayed. You have laid on the floor with tears in your eyes crying out to God for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God is going to do it! Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, my heart wants me. So, that's how I got in the street ministry. <laughs> it was one thing, a prophetic word, a powerful dream. And I knew that I knew that God had called me to do this. I was, like my wife and like many of us, I was the kind of guy that sat <laughs> That, that when I was a young boy in school, I was afraid to be able to even talk in school, afraid to raise my hand, afraid to give a book report in front whenever that was scheduled. Sometimes I'd stay home because I was sick to my stomach, and I was. And now, God, using the weak and foolish things of this world, you don't have any excuse, not one, not one. And so there I was, and we traveled all over our region, in bus terminals, and in airports, and in malls. I've been thrown out of every mall in there. <laughs> Praise God. People in, playing, and preaching, and prophesying into the surroundings, into the hearts and lives of the people that so desperately need God. Yeah. And you know what? That's normal Christianity. Yeah. You're not looking at some super guy. There was a drug addict, alcoholic, in jail, hospital. If you wanted to put me on a pedestal and think, oh, that guy's really cool, that's why I wanted to tell you that. You can do this. You can do it. I know what the Lord said to you already last night. And this transition is going to bring you into a whole new place. Amen. He raised his hands that I received. So, okay, I'm not going to talk about myself, but I did that ministry. God gave me teams. I trained. So many taught in a couple of Bible schools, training, 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 ministers, training, evangelists, street ministers. For 12 years, we went to the street. If not every day, at least once or twice every week. So I got a lot of experience out there. I had a lot of rejection. I had people get upset with me.
Let me teach you something else quick. We're on a track like this. One side is ministry. The other is the work of God in you, being conformed to the image of Christ and the development of your character. And those things moving together will allow this glory train of revival to flow through you. You don't want one side to be longer than the other. So, it's good for you to get rejected. I'm not talking about your personal life now. No, God is healing all of those things. You got that? I'm talking about be rejected by them because you are a minister of Christ. It gives a puncture wound to your flesh. It's a good thing. But it takes a while, but you know, you get to realize that this flesh really stinks. It doesn't have anything to offer. It's better for it to get punctured so that now this life of God can flow out from you. It's through our wounds that the Holy Spirit comes out. That's what Watchman Nee said. You understand what I'm saying? So don't shy away thinking, oh, they're going to laugh at me or reject me. It'll only make you stronger. Okay, that's my two cents. So now it's your turn. Exercising any spiritual gift requires your cooperation. Amen? I believe that God has given me the gift and the authority to release this prophetic gift.